A Chinese company plans to make cloned beef on a massive scale. Michael, would you eat it? Uh, yeah, I think in this case I would. So, um, so what's happening is in China, the middle class is growing uh, astronomically in wealth and in size. And to keep up with the demand of meat, uh, the, this Chinese company has decided to clone beef. And so mm -hmm. this cloning factory is going to push out about uh, six times what an American uh, li livestock farm can push out. And um, that's how they're going to be supplying this, uh, this demand for meat. Wow. Yeah, but it's also important that this company also says it's going to clone pet dogs and racehorses. But even if they have the same genetics, that doesn't mean they have the same environmental factors, so they won't be the same as the original animal. Right. It's just crazy. I mean, the, the whole scale of this, and it's very kind of modern China, kind of like this whole industrial push. And then, but what are, what are the impacts of this? I mean, kind of like, you know, how are they going to feed all these cattle? What's That's the environmental impact going to be? I do think it's amazing, though, and I'm fascinated by the whole pet dogs and racehorse thing. Like, kind of, what's this going to mean for sports eventually? So, you know, but all these things, but it is, it's fascinating. I think I would eat it. You know, it's the future. Yeah, they've it, done it. They've done it before in terms of uh, with pork, but we haven't seen the longitudinal effects. What is, like you said, what is going to be the impact on the landscape of our Earth? An eight-year-old dubbed the Young Indiana Jones, pretty nice title for an eight-year-old, discovers an ancient artifact near Jerusalem. James, tell us about this prodigy. Oh, it's so cool. Like, <laughs> it and a young boy wandering around an archaeological dig basically finds this the head of a ceramic statuette, which is probably about 3,000 years old. It's kind of like the, probably the type of thing we all dreamed about doing as kids. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in countries like Israel, there's a huge amount of this type of thing there. Yes. And, you know, so, you know, it's an amazing discovery, and it, it's great for him, and it's great for his classmates as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what's really fascinating is you have this young boy, right, eight years old, and, uh, and this relic that's thousands and thousands of years old, has survived wars and a number of other things, and uh, somehow their paths have aligned for this this brilliant moment in time when uh, he's able to just kind of happen upon uh, this really valuable relic. So I, I think that's really cool. It's very poetic and it's, it's kind of an awesome. And in story. great condition too. Yeah. yeah, and it's really good he told the government because in September there were a group of construction workers that found a Roman era sarcophagus and they didn't tell anyone and they actually damaged it when they tried to excavate it and now they're in big trouble. Whoa. Yeah, no, that's crazy. And what's cool about this artifact, it was the head of, I believe, it was a fertility the goddess. goddess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he found something that was part of the cultural <laughs> landscape, but I guess when you're digging around in Jerusalem, you'll have better luck to find something ancient and relic than you will in Jersey. Egypt is now 90% certain of a hidden chamber in King Tut's tomb. Laura, what does this finding mean? Yeah, it means there might be something buried just beyond King Tut's tomb. This came about because uh, Nicholas Reeves, who's an Egyptologist, noticed two cracks when he was looking at scans of the tomb. And he thinks that maybe the tomb of King Nefertiti, which is the stepmother of King Tut, might be buried behind there. But it's anyone's guess what's really behind the walls. Yeah, there's been this kind of talk for a long time that Nefertiti might be in there. You know, basically the whole idea is that Tut's tomb wasn't ready for him when he died, so he was placed in somewhere else. So the, what I'm interested, though, like these two hidden doorways, which seem to be at the crux of this, now they've got this big job to get through there without actually damaging the tomb. I think it's fascinating. I, my gut tells me I think we're going to get some really interesting news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's interesting, but I'm also very skeptical. So there's a lot of ifs in this story, right? It there is a might, theory. There might be this <laughs> chamber, and then once you're within the chamber, there might be uh, the, the gravesite of Nefertiti. Uh, you know, I think what, I've, what we found with a lot of these tombs is you don't really know until you sort of crack the door mm -hmm. open, and so I'm eager to see what's inside. Well, they just sent off some of the findings to Japan who are going to be looking into it, so hopefully we'll have an update sooner than later. New dinosaur footprints show sauropods frolicked in shallow water. Michael, was this an ancient ancestor to the mythological mermaid? But seriously, kidding aside, tell us about the new dinosaur. So, uh, so any ecologist will tell you that uh, footprints are really important because mm -hmm. you can learn a lot about about the size of an animal, how they socialize, and the environment that they live in. And so that's true for dinosaur footprints as well. When you find a dinosaur footprint, it gives you better insight into exactly how big these creatures were, mm -hmm. the environment that they were living in, and sort of how they interacted with each other over time. So this is a really big finding, and the implications are, are big. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. There's actually other evidence of seropods in Scotland. They have a tailbone, an arm bone, and a couple of teeth, but those can all be moved around. So this is the very first track mark and it really is proof that dinosaurs once roamed ancient Scotland. I just love as well kind of like the idea of these track marks like as one of the paleontologists said it looks like there was a dinosaur disco going on in this space like it just the kind of the the, the, the visual image of these creatures basically frolicking in this water or marshy area or whatever I just think is absolutely fascinating and previously people thought they were much more land dwellers so we still don't know why they were actually in this kind of watery space but you know maybe we'll find out more in the future. What's so interesting to me is that they were able to maintain this footprint for millions? Yeah, 170 yeah. million years. Millions old. of years. Mm -hmm. I mean,
mind-blowing. Now you know what we think. Tell us what you think using the hashtag 444science.